All right. Welcome back. This video, we're going to cover some basic AI. Um, we're going to put some health on Captain Awesome because he doesn't have any yet. And we're going to make this turret respond to when the player comes too close. It's going to turn and look at him and start firing. And I have some assets that I'm using, such as this turret and some effects that I'm using in a game, which I can't share with you guys. So you'll have to uh, make some uh, uh, of your own assets if you're going to follow along uh, at the same time. Which shouldn't be too difficult if we did the last two videos. Uh, we covered all the basics that's involved in building these sorts of things with the missile. We're actually going to copy the missile. And I'm sure you can handle the pivot point on something like this. Or maybe you have your own turret. You can just plug that in there and take the principal high-level ideas and go with that. So first thing we're going to do is cover the idea of uh, range. We already have a pretty good tutorial on triggers. Uh, but basically we're going to take this and scale up a sphere collider. So just add a sphere collider to this turret and scale it on up. I know 25 is good. That's a pretty good range. And whenever the player comes into this bubble, it's going to fire a trigger event. So let's turn this uh, collider into a trigger. And we're going to add an FSM to this face melter cannon thing. The action is going to be trigger event. We are going to do on trigger enter with the player tag. It's going to send an event which will be uh, player in range. Uh, we're also going to make player out of range. Okay. And we're also going to need a variable called player. Lots of player stuff. So in this state, it's going to wait for trigger enter on the player tag and it's going to fire off player in range. Then it's going to store what came into the bubble under the player game object. So it's going to fill this object, right? Now we're going to add another state, plug in this event, drag it over here. And here we can now make use of that game object that we just stored. So we'll say, look at, choose the player variable. So this variable gets filled, and then we reuse it here and look at. Now, we're gonna segregate basic behavior of this AI. We're gonna call this, uh, FSM behavior. It's important to keep your AI organized or else it will just turn into a giant spaghetti bowl of insanity. So this FSM is going to be kind of high level behavior, what's going on around us, and then we're going to create a new FSM for nothing but combat. And then we're going to send messages to this combat FSM. Oh, didn't name it right. We're going to send messages to this from the behavior FSM. Okay, so they're going to interact. This FSM is going to be like, hey, this is what's going on. And, you know, you might need to know, do something about that combat FSM. So when the player walks in the bubble, it starts looking at them. And then it's going to say, send event. Well, what events are going to send? You're going to have to choose game object FSM. Send it over to the combat FSM. And let's make a new event. Call it uh, in combat. I've made this before, so we'll just make sure it's triggered global. And then we'll make another one out of combat. Make sure it's global. Then we fire. Hmm. Oh, that's right. Make it on the combat FSM. In combat. And out of combat. Okay. Come back over here to behavior. Now we can send it. So when it jumps over here, it's going to say, look at the enemy, and then tell combat to do something about it. But combat's not doing anything right now. It's pretty dumb. 
Uh, we're going to set combat up to be much like uh, the captain's weapon cycling system that we made before. It's going to have an idle state when it starts. It's not doing anything. And then it's going to have a state here and here. When it's told that it's in combat, it's going to jump to here. And then it's going to start doing something. We're going to tell it to wait. And this is going to be our little cycle state. Sort of a pause. After one second, it's going to be finished. Come down here. And then it's going to create object. Uh, it's going to create this plasma goo object, which looks pretty cool, I must say. That's neat. I love plasma. I don't even know if that's what plasma looks like, but it sounds cool. All right, plasma goo over here. Spawn point. I've already got one set up. Oops. Drag it on over there. Spawn point is out in front. You basically just want to make sure that uh, when your when your uh, projectile spawns, the collider is not so big to intersect with the collider that you're going to have on your weapon. That happens a lot. What will happen is it'll just pop up and then immediately die. That's not what you want. That's not cool at all. So, don't let that happen. Anyway, so now that... Uh, it finishes creating the object, it rolls back to cycle, and then we're going to put the out of combat transitions here in both of these, just in case we're creating the object and the player leaves the trigger, it doesn't get left behind. So wire those both back, and uh, so if this event ever gets sent while it's in this cycle, it'll just jump back. No problem. Behavior. Um, in this state will be called basically danger. So something has come in the bubble and it's come over here and we're, we're in danger now. So it has to look at it and then send the event to, to uh, the combat system. Okay. Now, what if they leave? Oh my goodness. Well, then we just do trigger event, uh, trigger exit on the player tag. Send the event uh, out of combat or player out of range. There we go. And then just plug that in here. Cool. That's uh, pretty groovy. You could really do this with only two events, but in combat and out of combat and player in range and player out of range, but they're basically the same thing. But um, I just segregated them because I want to keep the um, FSM is very individual. I don't want to start mixing my FSMs together. I want to be able to just talk to a module of this AI's brain in its own language, right? So when I go to combat, I know that I'm not actually going to send messages to this one that are incorrect. So think about scaling when you're building AI. This is really simple AI, but like I said before, it'll instantly turn into spaghetti if you try to do it all too, too squishy together. All right. So now we've got this thing doing something when the player leaves and when he comes in. Hmm. But once we're out of the danger state and we come back to here, well, it's not telling combat anything. Let's fix that. Copy over the send event. Paste it here. And you're going to send the event out of combat. So when we're back in the idle state, we send the event out of combat to the combat system so that it knows to stop doing things. To stop firing terrible projectiles. All right, let's check it out, see what happens. Whoa, holy moly. Now these uh, projectiles, yeah, they're, uh, they're not doing anything to Captain Awesome. Uh, he's pretty much impervious to everything, so... Mm, that's a little low P. We're going to have to fix that. Okie dokie. Well, we need a health FSM on him, right? We need a health manager. And since um, being lazy is the fastest way to do anything, we're going to take something we've already done on the sky car, make a template out of it, and then throw it on Captain Awesome. That'll be great. So let's see here. 
we've already got this missile hit event. So when something gets hit by a missile, it knows. I get hit by a missile, comes over here, takes away 20 health. Cool, let's just make a copy of this. And then say plasma hit, right? Make it a global event. Plug it in right here. Move it up to the middle. And now, when I send the plasma hit, I'll make a template out of this, put it on every enemy, and then anytime I update it, all enemies will respond the same. Cool. So plasma hit, we're going to make do 10 damage instead of 20. Missiles, 20. Plasma, 10. Neat. So let's say, right click, save template. Save it as health. Yes, we want to replace. Now, we'll go to uh, add a new FSM. Whoops, on the sky car. Paste template general health. Yes, ooh, that's not what I wanted. Uh, abort. All right, we've already got this template. Let's just blow away this. Um, Existing FSM and right click, add template, general health. There we go. Uh -huh. That's better. Much more sane looking. All right, now we need to go to Captain Awesome and right click, oops, edit prefab, right click, add FSM component, use template, general health. It's the second way to do this. And a third way to do it, like we're going to do on the face melter, is to go um, make a new FSM. And then there is in the FSM tab these little periods here for picking templates. So you can actually click this button and see a list. You can click here and get the drop down. And you can even find it over in the inspector. If you look at the FSM name, so this one will be health, right? And you can connect that to here, and then there's the same little buttons here. So many different ways to access applying templates. So choose the one that you like best. All right, so the new turret, the captain, and the sky car all have the same health FSM uh, using a template. That's, that's pretty neato. Now, whenever I change the template, I just, I don't have to do anything to the other enemies. As long as they have the template, it gets updated. So I could put in different damage states for all kinds of different weapons, right? I click to edit this template, and I could have 10 of these, right? And just add them all in here, and then hit update, and then poof, all the enemies are responding to that type of damage. Pretty powerful. Really cool. All right, so now Captain Awesome has some health. Let's see what happens. He's he's not going to fare well. I can tell you that right now. <laughs> yeah, that's too bad. Unfortunately, uh, Captain Awesome has died and our stupid turret is still firing. Well, what are we going to do about this face melter? Let's go to behavior. And let's think about this. We've jumped into this danger state. If he ever kills the enemy, there's no need to be in the danger state. So we can just double click here, add game object is null. That's the one. Player. So this is the same variable that we stored from the collision. Uh, enter for the trigger. Now, whenever this is null, which means it's dead, it fires player out of range. We could make a different event for this, just to be more specific, but this goes to where we want, so it's fine. Do it every frame, and he's constantly checking while he's in danger to see if he killed his target. All right. Ah, there we go. Captain, I'm, I'm sorry, man. This, it's just not working out. There we go. Our turret has stopped firing. That's pretty neato.
So what we basically have done is make a turret that uh, can find out when something is in range and out of range, and it'll fire when they're too close. We have made a health template out of our template and used that on all of our stuff and made it very easy to scale with the game. And I think that uh, that's a pretty good little chunk of stuff. So we're going to end this tutorial here and pick up on the next one.